picture is so amazing and it's so multiple sen senses because of its way of being able to, to for, all, for all of us to realize how much we share and how much we have in common with each other. And like I said, this has changed my life in so many ways. I absolutely love the subject back from that day in seventh grade when I learned all about it. And every time I found something new about it, I'd want to have, I'd have another question that I wanted answered. So I'd look it up. Then I get two more questions. All of a sudden, my weekends, all my free time was spent studying astronomy. And yet, I still didn't really realize all that astronomy had to offer until Christmas Day when I got a, a telescope from my grandpa. And he gave me this telescope that I was able to turn skyward. And all the little points of light in the distance were transformed into galaxies and nebulas and planets with complex ring systems and moons. And it was so amazing because I had found my version of Alice's Looking Glass. Now, if you see in the corner, there's a picture of the moon. This is actually the blood moon last month we took it, the picture. And it was the last stage of the lunar eclipse, and it was so beautiful that we were just looking there in awe. And once you're able to realize that there's so much beauty there, just so close to home, you really wonder how much is out there that we can't see or maybe we'll never see. Now, this has transformed my life, as I said, but it changes your life as well. Look at the objects on the board. They don't look like they have a lot of common, right? They just seem completely random. But really, they were all created by NASA or some sort of space program. LED lights are originally created to help grow plants in space colonies, believe it or not. Because plants act differently to different shades of light, we were, they came in multiple different colors, they were long-lasting and durable, making them perfect for space colonies, believe it or not. Now, water filters save thousands of lives all the time in third world countries that might not get clean water. But really, it was created for orbiting spacecrafts and space shuttles for astronauts to get water. Now, the MCV, microbial check valve, um, what is, was so successful that after the first test trial, it's been used on every single space shuttle since then. And lastly, not Tom Cruise, I'm sorry, he's not an alien, neither is, was he created by NASA. He's wearing invisible braces. Invisible braces are made of a material called TPC. Uh, sorry, just TP. But so it's smooth, transparent, and stronger than steel. And so it was the perfect material for heat-seeking missiles, believe it or not. But they're also perfect for invisible braces. So astronomy has changed your lives in so many ways that you take for granted. But there's a lot of threats there as well, that astronomy has threatened you all the time. Think of the obvious one, asteroids. When we are surrounded by half a million asteroids in our solar system alone. So there are so many of them that are bound to hit us one day. So astronomers have dedicated themselves to figuring out a way to prevent this so we don't end up like the dinosaurs. Now, they have an idea called the gravitational tug, where they put a satellite next to an asteroid, and the gravity of the satellite slowly pulls the asteroid away from Earth. From Earth. So then it'll miss us entirely. Now, you might be thinking, why don't we just blow it up with a nuclear weapon, right? The easy way out. But actually, that wouldn't work, because the asteroid would blow up, collapse back together, and then instead of getting hit by one super large apocalypse bringing asteroid, we're going to get hit by thousands of teeny tiny radioactive apocalypse bringing asteroids. So much better for everybody, right? But so hopefully, with a lot of persistence and dedication to astronomy, one day we'll be able to figure out how to protect ourselves from this. But there are other dangers as, as well, right? There's one that you that you depend on every day for light and heat, the sun. Now, it might look like this little yellow dot in the distance, but really, the sun is a complex ball of superheated gas or plasma. And because of its complexity, occasionally, a burst of it will shoot out towards the Earth. Now, we get hit by all these all the time, and they never really hurt us, because the Earth is protected by a, grav a magnetic field that just kind of throws it away. It never really hits us. It might hurt astronauts astronauts in space, or satellites, but never us. But just imagine for a moment what would happen if it leaked underneath the, the magnetic field. Well, the 
the, common, the economy would collapse because the electrical grid would collapse, then all of a sudden, instead of having air conditioning, we wouldn't have air conditioning, we wouldn't have heaters, we wouldn't have refrigerators, nothing that we need as our survival as a species. So astronomers still don't know what to do. We don't get much of a warning. We might be able to say, oh, look, hey, look, there's a ball of fire shooting towards the Earth. It might hit us in about an hour. So hopefully one day we'll be able to have a longer time frame to be able to fix this and protect ourselves. Lastly, there's another danger that threatens you every day, and it's a little weird. It's a lot weird. They're roaming black holes. So the black holes you know of are the ones at the center of galaxies, the supermassive ones that are so big that even stars orbit them. But really, there are little ones as well that kind of just roam throughout the galaxy and just destroy everything there. So they're even hard to find because, think about it, a black hole against a black sky. So easy to find, right? So what we look for is gravitational lensing, where the light of distant stars is distorted by the gravitational field of the black hole. So instead of seeing a point of light, you see an arc. So in the picture behind me, you might see you know, a couple points of light, but if you look closely, there are almost ring systems around that one bright point. And that's how you can tell there's a black hole there. So this is really hard to find, right? If I'm flipping through thousands and thousands of pictures, no one's going to find them. So let's assume for a moment, though, that we are able to find them, and we have a better way to find them faster. So we still don't know what to do if we figured this out. We would, we'd, at the worst case scenario, we'd have to flee the solar system, which we still don't know how to do. So hopefully one day, with dedication, we'll be able to figure out how to protect ourselves from this worst case scenario. But there's another reason that astronomers are so dedicated to th this topic. It's because of the mysteries. We all look at astronomy as this way of piecing together the cosmic puzzle. We look at it as these, all these jumbled up pieces that we hope to be able to put two and two together and make the picture clearer for future generations to finally figure out. And you might not know many of these mysteries. There's so many of them out there. So here's one of them the mystery of dark matter and dark energy. So let's do a thought experiment for a minute. Think of everything in this room, all the matter in this room. Think of the matter on the planet, the solar system, even the galaxy. It's 100,000 light years thick. Now think of all, the all of the matter in the entire universe with the billions on billions on billions of galaxies. That's a lot, right? Now think of this as minuscule. This is only 5% of the actual universe. 95% of the universe is made of a mysterious dark matter or dark energy that we know nothing about. It distorts the way we live, but yet we can't see it. We can't feel it, smell it, touch it, hear it, nothing. But yet, it's there. So in the picture behind me, you see a jelly bean jar. And all the black jelly beans represent the dark matter and dark energy, the mysterious material that we know nothing about. And the colored ones is us, the regular matter that you thought of earlier. We would be a teeny tiny part of an atom on a sugar molecule of, let's say, the green jelly bean. Something so small that if we disappeared, no one would notice. Now, talk about that for a mystery. Now, there are other mysteries as well. What's going to happen to the universe itself? We know ever since the Big Bang, it's been expanding and accelerating. So what's going to happen now? Is it going to accelerate to a finite size? and just stop in a big chill as we have a finite sized universe? Is it going to expand forever? And finally, in a big rip, everything is ripped apart as galaxies are pulled from galaxies, stars from stars, planets from planets, until we are all the elementary particles of atoms? Or is it going to be a big crunch where everything expands outward and then collapses inward into the conditions like the Big Bang? We don't know what's going to happen to the universe itself. Now tell me that's not something you want to figure out. So there are so many mysteries out there that have engrossed so many people in the subject. We've been studying astronomy for thousands and thousands of years, since the era of the caveman, where we looked up to the stars as the word from God. And thousands of years from now, we will still be looking for the answers to these unknown mysteries. Think about it. My, um, there are so many just weird, quirky, strange things out there. Um, in the blue picture on the side, that's a picture of a quasar. Quasars are black holes that have swallowed so much material, it has to shoot it back out because it can't hold all of it. On the top, the one that looks slightly like an eyeball almost, 
That's a light echo. At the very end of a star's life, it would shoot out a ring of gas. And it would just be this cloud surrounding it. And so the light from the center of the star would bounce around inside of it and then hit us. So then we perceive that the matter is being distorted and moving at the speed of light, which we know is impossible. So we're distorted, so the light is distorted in the way we see everything. On the side, you can see a black and white picture of Saturn's rings and moons. And it's so close to home, but so beautiful in the sense that not only are the rings so gorgeous, but the moons are amazing. On the bottom, in the multicolored picture, is a picture of, of artist depiction of a black hole ripping a star apart. Black holes are really just collapsed stars, and they can cannibalize and destroy other stars in a spectacular ray of light. And lastly, the blue band is a picture of a sunrise from outer space, which from the International Space Station, you can still see the sun rise over the Earth, which is amazing. There's so much left for us to discover in this weird, quirky universe around us. If you think about it, my grandparents' generation was the one to land on the moon. My parents' generation was the one to create the International Space Station and to even now land a probe onto a comet. So what are we going to do? What's going to be our great accomplishment that one day we will look back and say, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe that that generation just did all this amazing stuff. So there's so many great things that we can do. There's so much left for us to do. Here's a couple of examples of not only things that we might do, but jobs you might have later. NASA, is, NASA and private companies are now talking about having a space colony on Mars, where people would fly to Mars and live on there. Neil Armstrong had it good when he said, I stepped foot off of Earth. What if you could say, I stepped foot off of Earth and everything in Earth's orbit to a completely unknown world and then lived on it? That's amazing. And also, exoplanets. There are people who come home now saying, hey kids, um, I went to work and I discovered a new planet on the end of the galaxy. What do you think I should name it? And lastly, rovers. We've been sending rovers for decades and decades, but yet there's so many untouched corners of the solar system that we have yet to send rovers to. One of them, Titan, is a moon of Saturn, and it is so amazing, and it's so much colder than Earth, but identical. So instead of having lakes and rivers of water, it is lakes and rivers of methane and acid rain. And, but yet, it looks so much like Earth, and it has a high probability of even having life there, which is amazing. So there's so, much, so many giant leaps that we may have accomplished in this generation alone. But to get there, we have to start small. For those of you interested, there are so many great places around Lake Villa that um, I have gone to and so many others have gone to. The Lake County Astronomical Society is a society that I belong to that meets up in Volo Bog. They are a group of amateur astronomers who meet together by their mutual curiosity and come there to learn more about what others are doing in astronomy and how they can improve what they're doing. The Adler Planetarium down in Chicago is my favorite place in all of Chicago. And they'll play movies about what's happening in astronomy, what we know about astronomy, and lastly, they'll show videos of how to find things in astronomy, how we can go up and figure out what's out there. And lastly, the Yerkes Observatory. It's a gorgeous place up in Lake Geneva that is so amazing that Albert Einstein said he used his Nobel Prize money to go and visit. So there's so many great things that we hope to one day be able to do in astronomy, so many great giant leaps that what we might be able to do. But to do that, we need to start small. And the small step that I think you can all do tonight is just to go out and look up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.